Ha, another Sunday, another album rankings episode. I have to apologize because I wasn't doing my regular last week. I decided to take a small break from that, but I'm back this week. And this week I'll be covering the best hard rock heavy metal albums of 1979. When you're done, you can check out my past episodes on the playlist. It is in the description box. And now let's get on with the video. Let's begin at number 10 with Whitesnake's second record, Love Hunter. It was released on October 1st, 1979. It was the band's first UK Top 30 record, reaching number 29. Songs that stood out were A Long Way From Home, the leading track, which reached number 55 on the UK singles charts, while Walking in the Shadow of the Blues was one of the most popular and praised Whitesnake songs early on in their career. The album became controversial because of its cover art, which featured a naked woman straddling over a large snake and blood on her hands from a snake bite. <laughs> I guess it didn't sell gold, plat gold or platinum yet, so, but that was coming down the road in later albums such as Ready and Willing, Come and Get It, Saints and Sinners, and of course, the one that broke them in the U U.S. slide it in. Next. At number 9 is Motorhead's third record, Bomber, released on October 12, 1979. That year, they had been together for four years and it had amassed a loyal following of both punk and heavy metal circles. After recording an album for United Artists at the label shelved, the band released its own debut in 1977. But it was overkill that the band hit their stride. The title track landed in the UK Top 40 after appearing again on the Top of the Pops. The band returned to the studio that summer with producer Jimmy Miller to record Bomber. Since its release, it went silver in the UK, and it only featured one single, which was called the title track, Bomber. Next, at number 8 is the aforementioned Overkill record, which features the title track and No Class as their standout tracks. Since its release, it had been up to UK charts at number 24 and went silver in the United Kingdom. And Kerrang! Magazine listed the album at number 46 among the 100 greatest heavy metal albums of all time. The American thrash band called Overkill was named after this album. Can you believe that? Next. At number 7 is Foreigner's third album, Head Games, released on September 11th, 1979. This would be the last album to feature Ian McDonald and Al Greenwood, the founding members of the group. And um, it was produced by Roy Thomas Baker, who was best known for working with the classic Queen albums, along with Mick Jones and Ian McDonald. Since this release, it made it to the top five with a Billboard 200 charts going five times platinum and it features the standout tracks Dirty White Boy, Women, Love on the Telephone, I'll Get Even With You and of course the title track itself, Head Games. Next, at number six is Journey's fifth record Evolution. Released in March of 1979 it was the band's first record to feature drummer Steve Smith replacing longtime drummer Ainsley Dunbar. Evolution features their first top 20 hit, Lovin' Touchin' Squeezin', and it was inspired by the classic Sam Cooke top 20 hit, Nothing Can Change This Love, and reached number 16 in the U.S. There was also a song called Just the Same Way, featured original lead vocals from both Greg Rowley and Steve Perry. This was actually Steve Perry's second studio record with since joining Journey. It has gone triple platinum since its release. Next, at number 5 is Kiss's Dynasty, released in May of 1979. It was produced by Vinnie Poncia. The song features the top 10 hit, I Was Made For Loving You, and other songs like Sure Know Something and the Rolling Stones classic, 2000 Man, which was sung by Ace Fraley. A little bit of a side note, Peter Chris did not play most of the drum tracks on his album as they were high... They brought in Anton Fig 
who actually played on Ace Frehley so um, to do the Dynasty sessions. Since its release, Dynasty went on to become a platinum record and made it to the top 10 of the Billboard 200 charts. Next, at number 4 is Judas Priest Hellbent for Leather, a.k.a. Killing Machine in the UK. Funny story about this retitling of the album. Hellbent for Leather was released on February 28th, 1979 due to the controversy over the Cleveland Elementary School shooting. But when it was released in the UK, it was called Killing Machine in November of 1978. The songs that really stood out were the title track being one, Before the Dawn being another, Take On the World, Evening Star, and The Green Metalashi. Since its release, it has gone gold in the United States, reaching only 128 in the U.S. Billboard 200, while it reached 32 in the U.K. Next. At number 3 is Van Halen 2, released on March 23, 1979, produced by Ted Templeman. It features the hit singles Dance the Night Away and Beautiful Girls. It also has one of my favorite songs in this record called Bottoms Up. Since its release, it is peaked at number 6 on the U.S. Billboard 200 and is 6 times platinum. I have to be brutally honest with you, man. I didn't think they would do a cover song of You're No Good, which was actually a song that was written by Clint Ballard Jr. It was actually a song done by D. D. Warwick from back in the day. It was a good song, by the way, so I can't complain too much about it. Next. At number two, and I covered this most recently on my album review series. It was my previous episode, so if you haven't checked that out yet, you can go ahead and do so. ACDC's Highway to Hell was released on July 27th, 1979. And this came when they first broke big in the United States. After spending multiple years touring Australia and Europe extensively. This was the album that broke them big in the United States as it reached number 17 on the <clears throat> Billboard 200, it reached number 8 in the UK and number 13 in the home country of Australia, and has gone seven times platinum here in the United States, which is actually the second highest selling ACDC album behind their next one, 1980's Back in Black. The songs featured The Highway to Hell, Girls Got Rhythm, too, Touch Too Much, and Night Prowler. Next, now we reach number one, and it's no surprise to me that I picked and ranked Scorpion's Love Drive as the number one record of 1979. It was released in February of that year, and some critics consider it to be the pinnacle of their career. Love Drive was a major evolution of the band's sound, exhibiting the classic style that would be later developed over the next few records. Love Drive cemented the Scorpions' formula of hard rock songs combined with melodic ballads. Since its release, it reached number 55 on the top 200. And was certified gold by May of 1986. It also proved to be a breakthrough in the UK as well. As it reached number 36 on the UK charts. Standout songs like Loving You Sunday Morning, Is Anybody There?, Another piece of meat, holiday, and of course, the title track, Love Drive. Here is a quick recap of the top 10 best hard rock heavy metal albums of 1979. White Snake's Love Hunter, to me, I like the album cover a whole lot. Featuring the naked girl stranded over a big ass snake. Two Motorhead albums have made it to this list. Because they were both released in 79, Bomber and Overkill. Foreigner's Head Games... I just put that in there because I just like the title track of it. Journey's Evolution made it to this list. Even though two years later, if you watch my best rock metal albums of 1981, Journey would have the number one album of that year with Escape. Kiss's Dynasty makes it to the top five. Judas Priest held Ben for Leather, a.k.a. Killing Machine. Even though Killing Machine was released first in November of 78, it 
he became head of Hell Bent for Leather in March of 1979 here in the States. Van Halen 2, Feel Good Party album, Highway to Hell, which broke ACDC big time in the States, and of course Scorpion's Love Drive makes it to number one. So that concludes this week's album rankings. Don't you believe it.